I wonder what the cost difference is between replacement and rebuild slash overhaul. This is really circumstantial, like heavily. A lot goes into making this decision. I mean, a lot. So the scale of the machine would be one thing. You know, some of these chillers are, they, they start off in the, now, I guess if any kind of scale and size, they're hundreds of thousands typically at the smaller scales. And then they scale into the millions, depending on the size of your equipment. Now, and that's also true for the overhaul cost. Your smaller machines are easier to overhaul and they're going to cost less. The parts are also a little bit less compared to if you had a larger tonnage, say a two, 3,000 ton versus a thousand ton, right? There's a quite a bit of difference in the, the amount of people required, the size and the weight of what's being lifted and the safety standards that are going to have to be into place and the rigging needed to do the lifts. Like there's a lot of details that goes into that. So the cost will vary heavily. A 500 ton to 1000 ton machine, uh, doing it, it, at least in my region, it costing 80 to 120 grand, depending on the specific machine is pretty typical. That's not an unreasonable overhaul cost for that size of machine and that only scales. Then you have to take into account, okay, this is how much it, it's going to cost in the timeline. Okay. So timeline has an effect here, uh, of an overhaul versus getting a new machine spec, getting it ordered, getting it built, getting it shipped, then getting it installed and then commissioned. Yeah. You get warranty and stuff and, and with it, but you get warranty typically with an overhaul style of repair to begin with. Right. Um, granted it may not be a factory warranty, but you, the many, the, the contractor that did the work is still going to be responsible for the work done on some level. So even the warranty thing you could kind of take here or there. It has been my experience that especially the larger the machine gets, the more true it becomes the time and cost required to get the new chiller, because especially in the context of this chiller is already down. It's already dead in the water and we really need it now. The turnaround time and cost for a new chiller is significantly higher than what it would be for the overhaul. And with the overhaul, we can get this machine back online faster and cheaper, but the faster in a lot of circumstances ends up becoming the big thing. When you have a conversation of, okay, it's going to, it's going to take us a month to get everything to do this overhaul and have, you know, within the next month and a half, we can have you back online in a, in an extreme case that versus, Hey, it's going to be six to eight months, if not a year plus before the machine's even going to be built at the factory, much less shipped to you. And we get to install it. That timeline alone is enough to make most critical facilities say, okay, well buy a new, that's, that's just not going to work. We can't be down for that amount of time. We've got a data center. We've got whatever we, process we've got going on here. We've got to get this back online month and a half, far better outcome. Does that kind of, is that painting a picture? It, also keep in mind that the, depending on the needs of the overhaul, you can get a, okay, how about this? Let me take a step back. Centrifugals, as an example, are built to hold up and last significantly longer and are built far more robust, in my opinion, than what we would expect to get out of other equipment. So would it make sense to completely strip down and rebuild an RTU, a split system at somebody's house, or even a most of your um, uh, air cold chillers? The answer is no. The, the conditions those chillers operate in at the same time also put a lot more stress on them because they're out in the elements most of the time. Whereas these centrifugals that are water cooled, 
they've got they're out of the elements usually so they have less wear on them from that perspective and they're made to like these are 30 40 year machines they're made to be taken apart and completely put back together and they'll function just like a new machine almost if done correctly if if done correctly and you can do upgrades to these machines right you can take an old machine that was a a, a single speed starter package and you can upgrade it to a variable speed you can upgrade the control systems and the manufacturers sell these components to be upgradable so that's one of these selling points and the benefits to going centrifugal in the first place these machines when when used and repaired correctly correctly i think is kind of the major point here they can be a career-long machine in ways that you wouldn't expect these others to do like your your condenser coils are going to be the main thing on air-cooled systems whether that be air-cooled chillers rtus splits whatever those are going to the cost to fix those is going to be so astronomical that alone is going to remove a lot of the cost benefits to fixing something like that where you don't have that with these water cooled centrifugals most of the time once everything is hashed out the overhaul ends up being the better choice usually when you see a centrifugal a water cooled centrifugal getting replaced it's usually because it's at that 30 40 year mark and they just may not even make the parts anymore they just flat don't make them <laughs> and they hadn't for five or ten years so the, the the back stock inventory might not be there anymore um or it's an efficiency thing like so there's been some i've seen that were say in their 20s time frame but when they were made they their significant the efficiency was significantly less compared to what a modern machine could do especially if they wanted to go mag bearing so at that point as long as they can wait for the manufacturing process the efficiency gains which in today's market has a like there's a lot of rebates and stuff with improving efficiency of the building they don't really care about the repair costs that's not their problem as long as electrically it's more efficient as a system right that's really what they're hyper focusing on that can that can be another area that tips that balance between this is worth it versus this is not that's, but again, the mag bearing side of things, short of the YZ and some of the newer equipment, that's going to be your your smaller machines at that because mag bearings, other than the YZ, haven't really scaled to those larger sizes yet. So the the cost benefit and over, overhaul on those smaller machines is already kind of tilted. Hopefully that explanation was clear enough. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've I've committed. I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do, and to be able to educate, help others, and grow, and help this industry take step steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com. Like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you for all of those that are in the Academy. Y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given.